Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the most expensive new cards from the newest set. Now that the dust has settled, and, and by set, I mean, it was like kind of like a mini set. I don't know, like an extension of the other set. I'm talking about Matt, M-A-T, I think that's the initials that that is. Aftermath, March the Machine, the Aftermath. And we're going we're gonna to have to see the aftermath of uh, what Wizards does about tiny little sets like this because this one kind of flopped and because of the sales some interesting things are happening with prices so let's jump into it starting off at number 10 and coming in 10th place we've got Samut Vizier of Noctamoon at two dollars and two cents so twice as expensive as uh, any of the cards that I can use in my budget but a very budget friendly card for many out there and of course a decently budget friendly commander two three human warrior cleric that costs one red green First Reich, Vigilance Haste. Whenever a creature control deals copy to a player, that creature in the battlefield this turn draw a card. Wizards is starting to do this kind of uh, new benefit for not just hasty creatures, but for like ones that enter the battlefield tapped and attacking, essentially. Like a very aggressive strategy. It's kind of a strategy that really hasn't been all that effective for quite so many years in, uh, in Commander, but now they're starting to actually give some support to it, which I really do enjoy. And yeah, it's a cool concept. It's a cool Commander. It's one that can help out with aggressive decks already that can utilize this in 99. And of course, as a Commander, a lot of card advantage there as well to be had. So yeah, not surprising to see this one up there at $2. And again, I will mention... There's only like 50 or so cards in this set. So it's really interesting to see kind of which ones get to the top of that. And again, because of just like the, I mean, differentness of this set, the uniqueness of this set. And again, the factor that this set didn't sell all that well from what I'm hearing. It's doing some interesting thing to prices. So let's move on to number nine. And coming in at ninth place, we've got none other than Kiora. Kiora. I always think of Kiora's follower like, so just Kiora. Kiora! Just following me from behind. Anyways, Kiora, Sovereign of the Deep, a 4-5 Merfolk Noble for 3 green, blue, Vigilance Ward 3. Whenever you cast a crack and buy an octopus or a serpent spell from your hand, that's right, C, Monster Tribal is back. With the top X cards of your library, X that spells mana value. You may cast a spell from mana value, X less from about paying its mana cost. For the rest of the mind, your library in random order. Basically, hey, cast big C monsters and probably cast some slightly big, slightly big, less big, slightly smaller. There we go, we got there. Sea Monsters for free out the top of your library. Sea Monster Tribal is a very, very popular thing. Many players out there absolutely love it. There are a lot of Sea Monster Tribal commanders already out there. I mean, you've got like a Rick uh, You've got um, basically any five color commander. I mean, you can basically make Sea Monsters if you really want to go into it in that way. I mean, Morophon would probably be the pick if you're going to go actually tribal, tribal. But yeah, that would work very well with this too. And um, and yeah, this one obviously is a great Sea Monster Tribal Commander on its own as well. So just throw a ton of Sea Monsters in your deck. Do some really crazy things. Yeah, $2.78 currently for this card. Moving on at number eight, we've got Nahiri Forged in Fury. Coming in at $4.15. So jumping up in price quite a bit. And again, you're going to be seeing that with, again, this is only a 50-card set, but some of these cards can get quite expensive and, uh, yeah, particularly expensive toward the end of this. Nahiri is a 5-4 core artificer that costs 4 red-white affinity for equipment. So, I'm, I think we've probably seen this before maybe once. I, I'm not sure exactly. We've seen affinity for artifacts, obviously. But the ability to cast this commander again and again and again for basically nothing, that is fantastic. I mean, two mana, yeah. But still, I mean, the amount of cost reduction you're going to be getting is absurd. Just fill the board with equipment. And Nahiri, of course, will be out with that. Whenever a creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library. Whenever you you may play that card this turn, you may cast equipment cells this turn without paying this way without paying the mana cost. We got there. Basically, hey, uh, go wide, attach equipment to your creatures, swing, get things off the top of your library. And if they're equipment, they are free to cast. So fill the board with even more equipment and then attack for even more next turn. And again, if you need to cast uh, Nahiri again, just, just two mana, essentially. So yeah, $4.15 works very well in equipment tribal decks out there. I mean, not equipment tribal, like equipment decks, I guess. Equipment theme decks, that's the word. Or obviously as a commander as well. Yeah, very potent. But let's move on to number seven. Hey, do you like Enchantress? Do you like playing with enchantments? Absolutely, many players out there do. 
And Calyx, Guided by Fate, is a new great addition to Enchantress decks, and of course a great new commander for, you know, Enchantress deck itself. $5.63, currently 2-2 Human Druid, that is a legendary enchantment creature for one green-white. Consolation, whenever it... Uh, Calyx Guided by Fate and other enchantment is battlefield to control, you get a plus one counter target creature, so that's just a nice additional benefit uh, whenever you're getting enchantments in play. Make your creatures more deadly. Of course, proliferate effects can work well then with it too. On top of that, whenever it or enchanted creature you control deals counter to a player, they create tokens copy of a non-ledger enchantment you control. Do this only once each turn. So, yeah, whatever your best enchantment is, you can get an extra copy of it. That's fantastic. I mean, I uh, am a sucker for Song of the World Soul, so I'd probably do something like that. I mean, you can do things like Mirari's Wake, that kind of stuff, too, which can get quite gross. Um, yeah, there's a lot of gross enchantments you can really take advantage of with this. Yeah, again, in a, you know, aura-centric deck and one... That already has maybe a commander that really cares about auras, cares about maybe Voltroning with auras. There's a couple of those out there. This can definitely be a good include in that deck. And of course, as always, yeah, this is also a great commander for those kinds of decks as well. Moving on to number six, though. Let's move on to a different kind of commander. $5.63 as well. Not sure why Moxfield put them in this order, but it did. So apparently, Tyvar, you're number six. <laughs> you gotta help Calyx for probably no reason. Anyways, Tyvar the Bellicose 5-4 Elf Warrior. For just two black green. Whenever one more elves you control attack, they gain death touch on of turn. Yeah, we're going elf tribal. Each creature control has whenever a mana ability of this creature resolves, but plus put a number of plus one hours on it equal to the amount of mana this creature produced. This ability triggers only once each turn. Um, hey, okay. So, what do elves like doing? Well, they like attacking. Cool. All right, let's give them death touch when they attack, make them deadlier. Awesome. I mean, if you give your creatures first strike, good luck to your opponents. How about also, uh, they like tapping for mana. Yeah, they do. So we've got a bunch of mana dorks now that can become incredibly impactful. I mean, just think about essentially ways to maybe have your elves tap for even more mana. Maybe just get some elves out there that can tap for an absurd amount of mana. I'm thinking, you know, just ones like Wirewood Chandler can tap for like 10 mana easily. And just become giant heavy hitters in absolutely no time. Yeah, it's going to be gross. And of course, yeah, with that Death Touch too, consider trampling as well. So Elf Tribal, yeah, this is definitely a commander and definitely one that can go well in an Elf deck. I mean, Lathral Blade of the Elves, yeah, that, 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 that might want to consider this one. Now let's move on to number five, though. And starting off our top five, we've got, well, yet another Planeswalker that lost its spark, apparently. Sarkhan, Soul Aflame, $5.74 for a 2-4 Human Shaman for one blue red. Dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. That's nice. Reducing the cost of your dragon spells. Who likes to do that? Uh, the Ur Dragon. Uh, yep. The Ur Dragon absolutely loves that. So maybe another consideration for the Ur Dragon, which definitely didn't need any more considerations. But yeah, you can go Dragon Tribal with this one too as your commander. On top of that, whenever a dragon enters battle under control, may have Sarkhan become a copy of it until another turn, except its name is Sarkhan and it's legendary to other types. Okay. Um, yeah, basically clone dragons. Great. I can't see this just getting pretty absurd with anything in an Ur Dragon deck. So, yeah, this definitely can be a great include in those decks. And that's probably driving its price up because, yeah, Ur Dragon, I mean, Ur Dragon, Dragon Tribal is quite a popular tribe. Moving on to number four, though, we've got Narset Enlightened Exile, a 3 4 human monk for one blue, red, white that costs $6.42. We're starting to get up there. Creatures you can draw prowess. Okay, that's pretty gross. As a reminder for those of you who don't remember what prowess is, I believe it's, hey, whenever you're casting a non-creature spell, not just in some sorceries, non-creature, that creature gets plus plus one time of turn. So all your creatures having that is lovely. Yes, spell sling, and all of a sudden your creatures are massive. If your opponents are trying to block, it's going to be incredibly difficult for them to ever determine how to block because you're going to be like, well, I've got all this mana up, all these cards in my hand. If I, as long as I have, like, instance or any, you know, non-creature with flash, essentially, then, yeah, uh, I can just change the combat math just slightly. Uh, whenever Nar is set in line, exile attacks, exile target non-creature non land card with a mana value less than our set's power from a graveyard and copy it. You may cast a couple of paying its mana cost. Keep in mind, it says a graveyard. Ways are starting to do this where it lets you access anyone's graveyard, which is lovely. So now you can take your bones things and say, I'm using them against you. Especially their non-creature spells, which then prowess your creatures even further. So, yeah, the more you pump Narset through, I mean, you could go like Voltron-ish, you know, with like Black Blade Forge, those types of cards just to make it easier. Or if you just start casting again, spell slinging and making a lot of different prowess triggers, you can do that as well. Have fun with this one. Yeah, I can see this one being very popular. This one, I would guess, is probably more popular as a Chimera than 99. But of course, with certain spell slinging decks out there, it can definitely be added as well, like Kaikar. Yeah, that could definitely be consideration for that one. Moving on! Oh no, we've got someone trapped on New Cabana! 
I'm Nixless, Captive Kingpin. Oh, you're a captive knob. Oh, no, you can't leave. Oh, no. 4 3, Demon with Flample. 4 2, Black and Red. Whenever one, more your, whenever one or more of your opponents each lose exactly one life with a plus one counter and ob, exile the top card of your library until your next 10 step, you may play that card. Players love Impulse Draw. Did you know that? Many players love Impulse Draw. Players also love Flample, and they love flampling creatures that can get through for a lot of damage. They also love Tims. They also love Swoopport Cutthroat and Life Draining Effects. They also lose, well, I mean, some, some love, some don't love combos. This has it all. This has absolutely all of it. This card combo is incredibly easy with something like, you know, all be one. Uh, yeah, this is like, hey, I win. I mean, you need to get damage through first, but hey, I win. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, again, any kind of a Tim player is going to love this. Any kind of a player that likes, uh, you know, utilizing those Zulport Cutthroat Drain Effects is going to love this. This can become incredibly heavy hitting in absolutely no time. Throw on a Double Strike, you know, Fire Shrieker on it, essentially. And you're probably going to one-shot someone. At the very least, you're going to two-shot someone, even just by getting counters on this. And on top of that, again, it's got combo potential. It's got, like, Voltron potential. Again, it, gets, it has a ton amount of, you know, potential card advantage. Potential, you know, temporary card advantage, I should say, with that Impulse Draw. But still. A fantastic commander in its own right, and one that if you're playing a deck that has those Tim Kemp effects, you know, you're just like, yeah, let's just throw this in there. It's got Tim effects, Tim kind of effects, so let's just let's just do that. So yeah, Ab, uh, yeah, you might be trapped in New Capanna, but you're also trapped in our hearts now. Just kidding. Anyways, moving on to number two. We've got an oldie, but a goodie. That's right. Karn is back. Karn's like, yeah, I made all these mistakes or something, and now I get a gold arm. Cool. I think that's how the story goes. That's exactly how the story goes, right? Car Legacy Reforged, $12.18 currently. Star, Star, Ledger Artifact Golem for 5 mana. Power and Time is each equal to the greatest mana value among artifacts you control. That can be a lot. At the very least, it's 5 because card is obviously an artifact. So basically, hey, um, get your Metal or Colossus out. No, it's an 11-11. Gross. So yeah, again, Karn can very easily again be a 2-shot KO, 1-shot KO with Double Strike. At the beginning of your upkeep, add colors for each artifact you control. This mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells until on a turn. You don't lose mana except phase Zen. The vast majority of spells you're going to be casting in this deck are going to be artifacts anyways, because you're in a colorless deck if you're utilizing this in your, you know, as a commander. Then there, you, you get like a bunch of free mana, like a Blink Moth Urn, but only benefiting you. Uh, more specific though, but still, hey, a lot of free mana to cast more artifacts, to so then get a lot more free mana, then cast more artifacts. Have fun with that. Yeah, uh, pretty gross. So yeah, as a commander, obviously pretty impactful. And of course, in the 99 of an artifacts deck, yeah, this can do a lot of work for you as well, especially in a colorless one. So um, yeah, have fun. Anyways, yeah, $12.18, that's quite a bit of money. Um, never gonna be budget for me, most likely. Oh gosh, here we go. Okay, I was gonna say like, oh, this is jumping up quite a bit. Yeah, it is, here we go. Karn, I'm sorry, but nowhere near number one, because in number one spot, we have, oh gosh, okay, <clears throat> here's the price, $31.95, Nissa, Resurgent Animist, oh my goodness, back with a bang, 3-3 three, three Elf Scout for two and a grain, lost the spark, but gained a lot of price, and, and now not evil again. Uh, landfall, whenever lander's battlefield under control, add one may of any color. Then, if this is the second type's ability to resolve this turn, reveal cards to the top of your library to reveal an elf or elemental card. Put that card in your hand. Rest the bottom of your library to random order. You know what's good? Lotus Cobra. You know what's really good? A commander that's Lotus Cobra. Gross. I mean, Lotus Cobra plus, like, now elf slash elemental tribal, or just pick one or the other, or both. Okay, so yeah, again, literally just in any landfall deck, you're like, oh yeah, that's another good include for $31. But yeah, basically, hey, do you want a second copy of Lotus Cobra? Yeah. Hey, do you happen to have like an elf or like an elemental in here that might help out? Yeah, cool. Let's get those. I mean, like, if you're in a landfall deck, there's plenty of great elementals that you can just get now for free up the top of your library if you only have like a couple in the deck that are really good. Like, I don't know. Um, Roiling Elemental. I think that's the one that steals creatures when lands come into play. But yeah, Royal Element? I think it's Royal. Regardless, um, yeah, pretty impactful. Pretty gross. Landfall is an incredibly popular thing, so it's not surprising that this one is incredibly popular and gross. Also, Elf Tribal is very popular. Elemental Tribal is becoming more popular, so it fits obviously in both of those, each of which are in green for the most part. I mean, almost always. And uh, yeah, you're gonna be able to get a lot of lands in a play, get that trigger quite a bit, get a lot of card advantage off of this, get a lot of mana off of this. And again, as a commander, yeah, definitely a solid commander as well. So not surprising that Nissa, um, well, is number one, but also pretty surprising that it's a $31 price tag. So yeah, pretty crazy. 
Uh, never going to be budget for me, but maybe it's budget for you. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on all of these. Are there any cards in here that you think are overpriced? Are there some that are underpriced? What do you think else in this set, you know, should be up here in price? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. There's a link to all these cards in the description below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.